firing on target. Hey guys, Dantix here. I've been absolutely loving Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate. It has scratched the itch for a tactical turn-based RPG that XCOM has left horribly plagued on my skin. Speaking of, the God of Rot and Plague is at it again and it's up to a secret order of badass incorruptible space marines called the Grey Knights to take action and scratch the galaxy's itch clean. XCOM veterans might be familiar with this style of game, but there are a ton of differences as well as new mechanics you will absolutely benefit from understanding before jumping into the action. You don't want to make these critical mistakes you can't take back, so in this video, I'll run through the differences and my top tips for Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate. If you want a more advanced class guide, check out my video below, and if you like this sort of content, you know what to do. Let's start with the many ways Chaos Gate improves upon XCOM and how that benefits you. The truth is, it's a nod to the series in a lot of ways, however in others it streamlines a, a lot of busy work. First, you'll no longer need to reload your save after missing a 95% chance to hit, as there's no longer chances to hit. Instead, when enemies are in half cover, they take reduced damage, and full cover they can't be hit with traditional ranged weapons. Some can, but that's a conversation for another time. When you select an enemy with an attack, you'll see how much damage you'll do. You'll also have a chance to critically hit with some attacks, and you'll see the potential of how much a crit will do next to the damage amount of the selected enemy. These are Grey Knights after all, brother. Not some rookie recruits. They don't miss, and they don't shoot each other. This lets you be far more tactical, and losses come from your mistakes, not just bad luck. The luck can come in the form of who gets attacked when, by what, what the blue mutations are, chaos surges, random events and more. When combat ends, your knights get all their action points back and reload their weapons regardless of if they just ended their turn or not. This stops the time wasting process of having to reload and rearm your soldiers and pass a turn in order to get them moving again to the next fight. You also don't need to stagger your troops movement as they advance forward out of combat in order to not be caught without any action points at the end of a sprint, therefore letting your enemies get a full round against you without being able to get into position. Chaos Gate removes this worry. When you first get noticed, and you will get noticed since you're basically a walking tank, not stealthy assassins, all your knights will have their action points restored. Therefore you can start the attack fully ready to go. There's no need to move half distance and pop your knights into overwatch before ending your turn just in case a patrol comes past. Speaking of Overwatch, it was and still is an effective way to lock down an area, but in Chaos Gate, it pays to be a bit more aggressive. It might serve you to simply get into your enemies' faces, as if they try to move away from you in melee range, most knights will take an automatic response swing at the enemy. You can also use your Aegis ability to give yourself more armor, shrugging off most attacks. Keep in mind that depending on the position of your overwatch, your knight may hop out of the cover they were in in order to stand. So it's not a combination of defense and offense flawlessly like it was in XCOM. Your knights are also surprisingly athletic, jumping over obstacles and gaps with ease. So be sure to spend some time checking where you can go. When you do, your cursor shows how many action points you'll have remaining if you decide to go to your target location. If you keep it still, you'll also see what enemies you can reach with your ranged weapons, denoted with the lines heading towards them from the spot you highlighted. You can also queue up multiple points to move, which comes in handy when you want to step around hazardous areas or get to a better side when melee attacking. Also, don't feel the need to level up too many knights in Chaos Gate. In XCOM, an injury would have your troops sitting out the fights while they heal, like little children with poor scratchy boo boos. Oh. Your powerful knights need no rest and will fight through any injuries sustained, instead having a temporary negative HP debuff. There will be a few cases where events will take some knights offline for a while, so it's nice to have maybe 6 or 8 ready to go. I see little need for any more than that. Late in around the environment are numerous hazards for you to take advantage of, from explosive materials to pillars you can knock over to perfectly fall on your enemies. These hazards usually can hit multiple enemies and deal much higher damage than your knights can dish out, at least at the start and around the middle game, because you get some truly broken builds up and running in the late game. 
the game politely lets you know when something is interactable, putting a symbol there for either range or melee. Many times you may open with an opportunity to thin out your enemy's numbers or cut off a way to get to you by blowing a flammable tank. Sometimes getting lucky and having a part of the environment clean up the enemy that wasn't immediately obvious. On higher difficulties, it may be wise to simply lead your opponents back into traps and blowing them up when your enemies clump around them. Also, keep an eye out for special nodes. These will give you seeds when you harvest them in melee, and you'll need all the seeds you can get as they're used for research and upgrading your master crafted weapons and armor. Yes. With the right teleporting abilities, the environment can turn from a minefield to your playground. Speaking of, don't sleep on any teleporting abilities. Movement is so important in the game and getting somewhere without having to travel is even more so. Teleporting is so good that every knight that can't teleport feels hamstrung. The interceptor gets access to teleport and teleport strike related skill nodes and you want to make a beeline for that ASAP. Teleport strike is so damn broken that I found myself having to avoid using it sometimes in order to give my knights a chance for a kill and experience. It's not uncommon to send an interceptor in, clear out an entire wave of enemies before your other knights even take out one. There's also a 50% chance to get back your action points every time you strike or every time you teleport, so most of the time I'd be teleporting in or teleport striking in, cleaning up with regular melee attacks after and still getting out if I need to. Also for some reason teleporting in any way doesn't trigger auto abilities like your enemies overwatch. If there's an S tier for abilities, this is it. Librarians also get the ability to teleport their whole team, and this really helps classes like the Purifier who need to get into ideal positions in order to hit as many targets as possible with their flamethrowers and grenades. You also want to pick up the most powerful stratagem, Gates of Infinity, but I'll talk about that and positioning a bit more later. Don't forget about strong AoE attacks, like the Librarian's Vortex of Doom. When upgraded, it can clear out hordes of enemies similar to a grenade except using willpower instead of ammo. Like I mentioned, leading waves into choke points and then taking them out at once is a powerful way to take no damage on higher difficulties. In melee, when you crit, you'll see the ability to precision target specific points of an enemy. For example, if you want to disable their ranged weapon, you will... Uh, well, chop off the enemy's arm. It's just a flesh wound. Chopping off some demon's heads will cause them to attack their allies as well. Precision targeting is always activated when the enemy is stunned, more on that later. There's a ranged ability for the Purgator class called Ancestral Aim and lets you precision target opponents. Yes, you can shoot off an opponent's arm or head at range. Precision targeting is strong in melee, but even stronger at range as you can disable key targets from using their abilities or set them up to be taken out completely. A briefly mentioned stun. Each opponent has a stun number over a skull icon. When they take that many attacks, they will be stunned. Any melee attack on a stunned opponent always triggers precision targeting, but you also get the option to execute, which is an instant kill as well as refreshing one action point for all of your knights. Executions are inspiring after all. Naturally, keep an eye out for mastercrafted gear and abilities that raise opponent's stun. You might make a knight focused on raising the stun meter for quick, clean kills and to keep the party going. There are also abilities like the librarian's psychic shriek that raise stun by a massive amount. Be sure to check the stats and your enemies. I can see here that I have a 100% crit chance if I force attack, but less if I don't. Some precision targeting raises the stun more, so see if it will be enough to stun them, and if not, maybe chop their arm off instead. Make sure you keep an eye on how much chaos your attacks will do, so you can better plan for follow-ups. When you reach a world, depending on how infected it already is, the bloom will steadily rise after each turn. When it reaches 100%, you'll be hit with something bad in the form of a warp surge. From something manageable like your knights being hit with minus one willpower, to more difficult like extra enemy reinforcements. What you really need to watch out for is that you can make this bloom rise by using your willpower. Willpower is spent when your knights use their abilities and represents them tapping into the warp. So not only do you need to watch out for how much willpower you have left, you need to balance it out with the risk of getting a warp surge. Thankfully you can see how high the bloom will rise next turn, as well as how high your willpower ability will take it. In my experience weaving in the odd force attack or willpower based ability here and there was worth it as it made a difference between killing or not killing, resulting in less damage taken and less turns taken. 
Do you kill the enemies now and increase the bloom percentage, or do you wait an extra turn when the bloom will rise again? If you see that next turn the bloom is hitting 100%, then use all the willpower you want. The bloom will always go down to 0% after surging. Halfway through the game, I got access to the powerful librarian class, and when the bloom was high, I would create a powerful storm and unleash powerful abilities with reckless abandon. I found some Terminator armor that made it so spending willpower on the knight it was equipped to wouldn't raise the bloom, so naturally the librarian jumps straight in that. In the research tree, don't sleep on bloom suppression. Early on, it may completely stop the bloom from rising on the planet you're on, but later stages, you'll need it to stop being hit with warp surges every second turn. So between that research, the special armor, and some abilities, you should be mitigating most of the problems you'll have with the warp surges. Many missions in Chaos Gate have you holding out a few turns to be beamed back to your ship while waves of enemies try to swarm you. Depending on the difficulty setting you've selected, this could be challenging to upright impossible to get out of without scratches. However, there are ways to mitigate this. First and foremost, learn the trigger points. If the mission is to extract or destroy all seeds, do not extract or destroy the last seed carrier until you clear out his buddies and get into a better position. As soon as you take care of him, warp signatures will be detected and enemy waves will start pouring in. If the seed carrier's buddies are still around, that means you have to fight at a disadvantage. I mentioned that there is research in the game using seeds, but one such research will unlock stratagems, where the Inquisitor will use her powers to help you on the battlefield. As I mentioned before, I highly recommend getting Gate of Infinity as soon as you can. It makes it so you highlight an area and all of your knights will teleport there regardless of where they are. Anywhere on the map you have vision. So at these holdout endpoint missions, being able to rally your knights to a defensible position, put them on the offensive or in a position out of reach is unbelievably invaluable. Also, when you're on a mission that has a clock, like destroying a bloom spreader, sending a fast knight up front to scout, then teleporting all the rest of them next to it can save you valuable time, especially if you can take out the plant in one turn before your enemies can do anything about your presence. Gate of Infinity is unlocked early and it's the S tier of stratagems as the game itself doesn't seem to know what to do to make it difficult for you if you simply teleport all your knights where you want them. You need particular things on your team if you want to purge all plants of filth. You need a knight that can purge negative effects from both you and your enemies. Healing can be achieved multiple ways from certain classes to servo skulls to stratagems. Make sure you have at least one way of healing on higher difficulties, but it's not so necessarily on lower ones. Finally, getting someone that can either ignore armor or burn through it is invaluable. Some grenades can do this, but in my case, I used a ranged weapon that ignored armor. As you command. If you don't have a good melee interceptor with a lot of crit chance, get a skull that can take seeds from enemies. Having someone on the team that can reliably take seeds is important as it functions as a currency that you'll need in order to research, upgrade and finish the game. It's also good to have someone to focus on ranged damage and grenades as both come in clutch. The Purgator can fill this role as their talent tree can focus on both. Soon you'll unlock the Purifier and it can focus on grenades and ranged damage as well, except it has options to burn through armor and purge. So that's everything you need to know to get started. What do you think? Hopefully this video was of some help to you. I have more Chaos Gate videos on the channel, so for everything RPG, you're in the right place. Ciao friends.